If Minecraft Java is lagging, crashing, or stuck on a black screen on your Android, this video fixes it. I'm Minu, your Pojav Launcher tutor. In this video, I'll show you how to properly set up and optimize Pojav Launcher so Minecraft Java runs smoother and more stable on any Android device. Basically, the Pojav launcher that many of us used earlier to play Minecraft Java on Android has gone through changes and improvements. And today, most people recognize it as the Mojo launcher. But the real question is, is this launcher alone enough to play Minecraft smoothly on Android, especially with mods, performance tweaks, and advanced features? We'll look at the few launchers actually performs, what it can and cannot handle, and which setup is the most suitable for your device and playstyle. Now, let's talk about Minecraft Java launchers available on Android. Broadly, we can group them into two sides. On one side, we have the Pojav-based launchers, like Pojav Launcher itself, Mojo, Glowworm, and a few others. On the other side, we have launchers like Foldcraft Launcher, Hello Launcher, Zalith Launcher, and some Chinese community launchers. Let's start with the Pojav side. This launcher is officially available on the Play Store and is well-maintained under Mojo. In terms of interface, it has a clean and simple UI. It provides all the essential settings, like resolution control, multiple renderers, Java tweaks, and customizable on-screen controls. It also supports modded instances and mod packs, which is really useful. However, there is one major drawback. You cannot add mods, resource packs, worlds, or shaders directly inside the launcher. You have to download everything manually from the web and paste it into the correct folders, which can be irritating, especially for beginners. So if you're using a low-end device and just want to play survival with minimal setup, this launcher is perfectly fine. Yes, you can use mods and advanced setups here, but the process is longer and less convenient. Now let's talk about Zalith Launcher. Zalith offers almost all the same core settings as Mojo, but with extra flexibility. You get higher resolution scaling, up to 300%, custom themes, and much deeper instance customization. The biggest advantage is instance management. You can add mods, resource packs, worlds, and even shaders directly inside the launcher. So if you have a decent device and you like experimenting with mods, shaders, or custom setups, Zalith Launcher is a better choice. After selecting the right launcher, the next step is setting it up correctly to avoid crashes and lag. Just follow these settings carefully. First, always keep Java set to auto-select. This helps avoid version mismatch issues and prevents many random crashes on Android. Next, choose the right renderer based on your Minecraft version. For versions above 1.17, Mobile Glues or LTW works best. Renderers are a topic on their own, so if this video hits 100 likes, I'll make a dedicated video explaining each renderer in detail. Now set your resolution to 80% or lower. Lower resolution gives a direct performance boost on Android devices. Enable high-performance CPU cores and turn on sustainable performance mode for more stable FPS during gameplay. The most critical setting is memory allocation. Always check your available RAM and allocate memory accordingly. I've already explained memory allocation in detail in another video on this channel. Make sure to watch that before changing values randomly. These exact settings apply to Mojo Launcher as well. If you're confused about downloading mods, resource packs, or worlds, check the step-by-step -step guides on this channel. Once everything is set, download a mod pack that matches your device and playstyle, and enjoy smooth Minecraft Java gameplay on Android. If you face any crash while launching the game, don't panic. You can copy the crash report and share with any AI tool like ChatGPT or Gemini and ask why your game crashed. Most of the time, you'll understand the exact reason and how to fix it. And if you still can't fix it, you can reach out to me on Discord. I'll help you personally. Now, if your game launches fine, let's quickly set up the in-game settings for smooth performance. First, Render distance. A good rule is to keep it balanced with your device's RAM. Don't push it too high. Stability matters more than visuals on Android. Next, use fast graphics settings wherever possible. This reduces CPU and GPU load. Set your max frame rate to your device's refresh rate or cap it at 60 FPS to reduce heating and battery drain. If you're on a low-end device, turn on VSync. VSync locks your frame rate to your screen's refresh rate, which helps control CPU usage and saves battery. These are the basic in-game settings that everyone should follow for stable Minecraft Java gameplay on Android. If you want FPS boosts, mods, shaders, and crash fixes for Minecraft Java on Android, subscribe. 